I heard either TV, computer, something, I read a book, somewhere, somebody said, you know, everybody has a story and everybody should write it down, especially if you have children, um, because they don't know the story. You know, I said to myself, well, my story's interested and my daughters don't know anything about my, you know, parents. So, yeah, I should do that. And my daddy is this great guy. You know, I would love for everybody to know what a good, you know, guy he was. And so that's what started it. My father and I had just such this, this special relationship. I loved my father. I, he was my world. I knew I was his world because I was his connection to the outside world because I had to interpret for him. I mean, we had a shoe shop. That's how he, we, you know, he made a living. He fixed shoes. And it was right next door to the house. So our house was here. There was a driveway in the middle. And then there was a shoe shop. Um, you know, right next to the driveway. So oftentimes I was in the house by myself um, and he would come to check on me and then go back to work and come and check on me and go back to work. And a lot of times I spent time in the shoe shop with him. I had a little, little small table and chair, you know, that was just for me. And he would teach me how to sign. Um, in between doing shoes for customers, you know, and he would tell me, you know, A and B, C. He would teach me the manual alphabet. So I learned how to spell and sign, you know, at the same time because I'm learning the alphabet and I'm learning how to sign. I'm learning colors. I'm learning signs for colors, you know, blue, yellow. He taught me all of that before I, you know, went to school. You know, it's just like growing up in a bilingual household. Kids who learn to speak Spanish, it's really not that different, and English. Um, it was the same for me. I learned how to speak American Sign Language and English, and it was very easy because I had people who lived next door. I had people who lived across the street. My aunt lived, you know, just down the road. So I learned to hear spoken language from my neighbors, from my relatives. And then I learned sign language from my parents. So I did understand that there was a difference. But I think the real difference is, is because I grew up, I mean, I was born in 1953. The professional organization for interpreters didn't start until 1964. So me as a young child having to interpret for my parents and then mainly my dad was something that kids don't have to do today. If, if, if someone is deaf and they have children, they don't tell their kids, you know, I need to, I need you to interpret uh, for this, that, or the other. If they need to go to the doctor's office, they can call, you know, an agency and say, I need an interpreter for Tuesday at three o'clock, you know. But back then, there was no such thing. It was just your children and for me because it was just my dad and I I was it because my mom left when I was four my father always made sure that I had uh, we had a TV in the living room but he made sure I had a TV in my bedroom I could play records I could you know I had a radio he made sure, he knew that languages was important and he made sure that I was exposed you know, to as much as possible, you know, so I had that auditory input. One of the funniest things that even though he couldn't hear a radio, you know, he watched TV and he would sit down and watch Soul Train with me. He loved Soul Train because I think of all the, the women dancers or whatever, you know, he enjoyed that part. That was visual so he could see that, you know. He was such a loving person. When somebody loves you, it doesn't matter what other people do to you or say to you. When you know you have somebody that loves you like he loved me, you can do anything. I just know that there was something always in me that I wanted to do better, but I, I not just to promote myself, but for me being better, meant that people would view my dad, who was deaf, as capable. Because if I messed up, they would say, see, deaf people can't raise children. Deaf people can't do. And I never wanted people to see that. I wanted people to understand deaf people can do anything that anybody else can do. They just don't hear. And so 
it was like in me, I just needed to be my best in order to have the best reflection on my father, that he did a great job.